Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today, I'm going to be doing the Metropolitan Division and my predictions for where everybody's going to land, all the teams are going to land in that division. I'm still in my cabin out in the mountains there, so there's not much lighting and all that. We don't care about all that fancy stuff, though, do we? No, we care about straight up hockey talk, cut right into it, no frills, boom. This is a place where you can put all your opinions, comment in the comment section, subscribe to my channel, you can say what you want. I will talk back to you. If I disagree with you, it's okay. Let's put it this way. If you're offended by pretty much anything at all, this might not be the channel for you. But if you're not, and you like to just go at her and talk about hockey, this is definitely the place for you. My NHL Pearls of Wisdom, all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. You can see down there in the bottom corner. Uh, new website coming up for them. And this is not a Flyers or a Steelers site. It just happens to be the name. It's all sports, all teams, all the time. So get yourself into some of that. Also, the Pearl of Wisdom show, which should be coming back for the hockey season, and bpowpicks.com. If you would like to make 1000 to $1,500 a month, if you've got you know, a couple hundred bucks a day to throw at some picks, and that's what we do and have done for years now, you probably want to get into bpowpicks.com. I'll send you a link down there in the, in the uh, bio. You can check it out. All right. Today, like I said, we're going to look. I'm going to look at each team starting from who I think is going to be last. And we're going to go to everyone and we're going to look at the reason why I think they're going to be where they are, look at the team overall, and uh, just give my take on everything. You guys give me your take in the comment section because I really love talking hockey. And if you do too, you're going to like this. Well, it's no surprise now, is it? The first team is the Philadelphia Flyers in last place. Um, I the, the main thing I want to talk about this, to tell you the honest truth, is the fact that I believe they all they really did want this in Philadelphia. I think Chuck Fletcher was slyly doing things so he doesn't have to say rebuild but actually doing rebuild at the same time this is a they're 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 owned by comcast a corporate organization that seems to be very concerned with any idea of rebuild or anything like that they don't want that attached to their name i'm guessing sponsorships people a lot of times people don't realize the teams are paid by sponsors. Sponsors quite often don't like the term rebuild because rebuild means people not in stands, in the stands. People, if you are a sponsor of a product, you want as many people looking at your product as possible, right? So it becomes a Difficult situation, especially in certain markets. And I really think that Philadelphia kind of did this. when uh, I remember when they traded for Ryan Ellis. I thought it was a good trade, to tell you the honest truth. Um, until I talked to Nashville people. And they said Ryan Ellis may never even play again. He's, he's gibbled. He's got a, the injury is not looking good. Even if he does, he's never going to be the same as he was before. So, yeah, they traded Meyer, who, is, who really is having a difficult time in Philadelphia. Um, but it looked like this is not rebuild, right? You just got Ryan Ellis. So we're getting better here. And everybody freaked out because most of the people that are serious fans in Philadelphia not just your average fan, which most fans that go to games, by the way, are. Really don't want to see, didn't want to see them go in this direction. They realize that 
this team is probably not as good as it. It's not going to be winning any cups against Colorado, probably not beating Tampa Bay. We should get younger, rebuild now, and do all of those sort of things. Well, I think they knew he was going to be injured. And one of the things you can do and say to the people that hate the word rebuild is injuries, man. What are we going to do? We tried. At least you're showing that you tried. But now Ryan Ellis gets injured. Oh, you know, that's even though they knew that was already going to be the case. Get out of the way here. Go away. Even though they knew that was already going to be the case. So that's one one move. Uh, also, getting Rasmus Ristolainen. Rasmus Ristolainen was a project right from the get-go. Uh, everybody should know that. I take into consideration that general managers and people, these are hockey people, they're in the league, they're not stupid, and they know what they're doing. They know about players, what they're all about. He had a he wasn't brought he wasn't brought up well in Buffalo. They were getting him, I believe, as a project because he has all the physical tools. To be incredible, six foot four, two twenty. He can skate. He's got a big shot. All that stuff. They, if you ever heard the term, he's got all the tools, but not the toolbox. This is a classic example of that. So that usually means he doesn't have the mind. He hasn't built the mind for the game to play with his skills in a way that's going to be effective. And I think with Rasmus, they know that he's probably two years away. He's one of those guys that are going to end up being late bloomers that they can work with him to be a top four defenseman still, which is fine if you're kind of rebuilding anyways, right? Now they gave up a crap load for him. And um, that's the best I can say about that deal. I still don't like the deal, but we'll see how that pans out. I all, I, I am just saying that getting he's relatively young. He could be a couple years away. And if they could do a, like a super quick rebuild here, he could end up being an effective part of their lineup. Um, they probably also knew there was going to be more problems with Sean Couturier down the road too, that this injury wasn't quite over. So as it stands, you they, they made it really kind of did a good job of making it look like they weren't rebuilding, but in their own little way, they were. I hope that didn't confuse you too much. They go get Owen Tippett, who's a young guy for Giroux. Uh, they don't re-sign Giroux. Notice that. That would definitely be a not rebuilding move. And as you go along here, and the injuries pile up, and it becomes more and more apparent, and they're able to talk to their sponsors, and they're able to smooth over that, you know what, the fans aren't really leaving. It'll be better if they just were honest with them and they can appreciate our children, the, the kids we're bringing up. And, you know, they'll still come to the games rather than, you know, we just got unlucky with all these injuries and now we're kind of forced to rebuild. I think that's what they're trying to sell. That being said, I have them in last place in this division. Uh, I love Tortorella, and here's another reason. They hired Tortorella, and they'll say, well, that is not a rebuild move. Sort of. I really think Tortorella honestly relishes the idea of a rebuild. Secondly, He's going to bring an attitude that this new team that they're going to develop of warriors, the old Philadelphia group. Even Tortorella said that he was made for Philadelphia. So I didn't I don't mind the move, but it's not going to work this year. It never has worked for him in the first year of wherever he's gone. Remember the whole Vancouver debacle, as they used to call it? Well, that wasn't really a debacle so much. That was a general manager, and I can't remember his name at the time, please help me out, who knew that that was the direction they had to go, but all the players refused to go there. He tried to show them a warrior mentality, and they rejected it. Now, I don't think that's going to happen in Philadelphia, but I do think that it's going to be a transition here, and he's going to bag the crap out of them in practices, and he's going to break them down and build them up, and this is to break them down. So watch for it to be not good. Uh, he has, Tortorella has been historically good with goaltenders. So 
That could be good for Carter Hart, but I don't think it's going to be enough for them to even get close to a playoff spot. Tell me what you think, Philadelphia Flyers fans. From what I've just heard in discussions with talking with Philadelphia Flyers fans, uh, they're pretty sure they, they agree with me on everything I'm pretty much saying here. So if you don't, though, let me know. Um, I didn't even get into the lineup all that much because I wanted to talk about that. And there's not much to talk about with the lineup. Next, second last, New York Islanders. And this is hard for me to do. Um, but most Islanders fans that I hear or I talk to, uh, very knowledgeable ones at that, also think that this is going to be a tough year for them. It really, to me, comes down with to how good this Lane Lambert guy is. Because I've been saying for years that Barry Trotz pretty much should be getting coach of the year for just getting the Islanders into the playoffs with this team. Uh, especially in the division that they're in. Now, this division kind of got a little bit weaker this year with Philadelphia being bad and Columbus not being... I mean, Columbus got better, but Washington looks like they might drop down a bit. So, But the overall East got a lot better. Now, I know they had an a absolutely abhorrent schedule to start off the year last year. There's also the fact that this team made the conference semifinals two years in a row during COVID in a, and didn't have much time off in the offseason. So they were definitely tired last year. No doubt about that. And I think, you know, that could come out and burn me here. I could be undervaluing them based on those issues. No doubt about that. But when I look at their lineup, I just don't see anything all that special here. Brock Nelson had a fantastic year last year. He could repeat it again, and he is a good center. He was a first-line center last year. Um, I do believe he's had 30 goal seasons before. He's very underrated. Uh, not the best two-way guy, but had a really good offensive year. Now, before then, did he ever have 30 goals? No. 29 years old, and he had his first 30 goal season. Uh, is that going to keep up? I mean, usually in those, in that case, that doesn't happen, but maybe it does here. I don't know. Uh, that being said, Matthew Barzal with his big contract. Look at his wingers, man. Parise and Zach Paul and, and, and Kyle Palmieri, if that's the direction they decide to go. Good to see Anthony Beauvillier up there in the top line getting the shot here, but. Even if it is Kiefer Bellows, I mean, he really hasn't showed his way yet. He could break out this year, I suppose. But am I going to bank on that? Uh, Palmieri could rebound. But at 31, am I going to bank on that? And I'm certainly not banking on Parise having a fantastic year at 39 years old. So again, Barzal has very little to work with on his line. He ends up getting 60 points, 70 points because he's doing everything and nobody can work with him. Nobody can keep up with him whenever they, whoever they put on his line, if that's the way they decide to go. Bailey, Paggio, Bellows. Eh. And then, of course, that third line, the identity line that they've been going on with for quite some time here. I mean, it's it's a fun line, don't get me wrong. And it certainly has obviously boosted this team energy-wise several times and does its job. Probably the best fourth line in the league still. We'll see. They're getting pretty up there in age. But that is not a stellar top 12 there at all. Now, defense, uh, yeah, Pelic Pulak, great. Romanov, he's not bad. We'll see. He's only 22. He's got a lot upside. I did like the move. Noah Dobson, probably going to take that top right spot. He's amazing. I love him. And then, uh, you know, you got, oh, oh yeah, I, I didn't mention Oliver Wallstrom. He should be in here somewhere as well. That's going to make that lineup look bad. Bad me. Bad, bad, bad. How could you not mention Oliver Wallstrom? Probably, I hope, take that spot up with Barzal. He's not the creative guy that you want to see, that I want to see with Barzal. I, I think Barzal needs a guy that is like super creative and slick and skilled and all of that to keep up with him. I'm not sure Wallstrom is that guy, but 
it makes that lineup a little better when he's in the lineup and he's only day to day, so he should be all right. Um, and then Mayfield is injured as well. So their top six is okay. The problem I have is their replacement players are not that great. And that's been the problem for quite some time. Otto Koivula, Cole, Cole Bardo, Shoshnikov, Hudson Fashing, Andy Andrioff. I mean, these guys are just not that great for replacement players. And the team is old as it is. So they end up half, what ends up happening with the Islanders, and even when they were making the conference semifinals, they would usually die down the stretch of the regular season because they overplayed their veterans, and that hasn't changed. I don't see that changing here. I could see the Islanders having a strong first 20 games or something like that because Sorokin is a beast. We know that. Uh, he looks like he's going to be absolutely fantastic in keeping him in. But in the long run, I think this, the, the, with the East being as strong as it is, that they'll have a bad second half and and fall off and end up being uh, second last. And, uh, you know, the good thing, I do believe they have their 2023. Whoops. First round pick. Yes. So hope that'll bode well for them. They can start bringing some youth in here. Islanders fans, let me know what you think. Uh, some of you might slag me for what I said. Some might not. I think uh, from what I've heard, a lot of people feel the same way. Next, Washington Capitals. Yes. Unbelievably, I have the Washington Capitals in the sixth spot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, there's eight teams in this division. <laughs> sixth spot. Um, it's hard to do, too, because it's a veteran. You know, Evgeny uh, Kuznetsov, I still think, is underrated in this league, and I don't know why. Probably because Ovechkin, that's why. Um, but injury, serious injury problems. Tom Wilson out six months. Backstrom, we don't know if he'll ever get back. And Carl Hagelin is an underrated two-way guy that's going to be out for indefinite. Tough, tough losses. Here in this lineup, um, I, I did like the pickup of Connor Brown, Dylan Strom. Interesting pickup. He really struggled early. Had his best year last year, offensively and defensively. Could end up making this making me look bad here. If Dylan Strom is his, you know, has has another huge jump this year. Washington could be a pretty solid team. Um, but you got TJ Oshie is injured all the time. Eller is having injuries a lot. This is an old team, not a deep team uh, forward-wise. I love Connor McMichael and the fact that he's getting the chance. They're going to be competitive, very competitive. And, and uh, you know, with Ovechkin there, these kind of Ovechkins and Crosbys, they have a tendency to make people look bad. And, and he could make me look bad here. But the defense, John Carlson's fantastic offensively. You know, he's not strong defensively, but his offense more than makes up for it. And Martin Fahervi is an is, uh, absolutely fantastic defenseman. One of the most underrated in the league. Orloff has slipped in the last little while. And I, I, I used to be really, really high on him. And he's still good. I just don't think he's as good as they need to be, him to be in the top four role especially with Nick Jensen there. And then they went out and got Eric Gustafson and Trevor Van Riemsdyk. I mean, they are, there is not much depth on D. There's not much depth forward-wise. If injuries happen here, they could be in trouble. Now, I've said that before, and they bring in guys like uh, Fal Falby Johnson and Malenstein, who's big, can skate. And what they do, do is they just beat up the opposition as much as they can and try to get their top guys to score. The problem is there's less top guys to score this year. And I think it really could be a problem. Um, and then we'll get into the big big move here. Darcy Kemper. And most Washington Capitals fans say, we're going to be okay. We have Darcy Kemper. 
Here's the thing. Darcy Kemper did not have a great year last year. Uh, Colorado has a t tendency to make goaltenders look good. When he was in Arizona, Rick Tockett played a system that was strictly built on protecting Darcy Kemper. It was an def extreme defensive system, and Kemper did well in it. His analytics numbers looked fantastic. Uh, but, like I said, he was extremely protective in that system. Colorado has made Grubauer look like a Vesna candidate. What happened to Grubauer last year? Horrible in Seattle. Washington, you remember Grubauer. He had one good year. You know? Is it possible they did the same with Kemper? His numbers were okay, but they weren't spectacular. Uh, you know, 0.921 and a 2.54. Those are good numbers, no doubt. But Colorado has got the best two-way forwards, first line, top 12 in the league by far. Maybe one of the best ever all time. Top 12 forwards. Joe Sackick is a heavily influenced analytics guy, and he built this team that if you don't play defense really, really well, you're not on my team. Let's put it this way. Nazem Kadri was their worst defensive forward last year. And he was average to above average. So you don't have that here in Washington, my friends. <laughs> you know, he's not going to have that luxury. And not to mention you got McCarr, um, Taze. All their defensemen are leaving me now. Manson. You know, their defense was solid. Their defense is way better than Washington's. And now here comes Darcy Kemper at 32 years old with this first real attempt to playing in front of a defense that, a team that defensively isn't that great. I don't think it bodes well. That's why I have him sixth. I just have a feeling that this is all going to blow up for Washington this year and it's not going to be good. Tell me what you think, fans. Sub subscribe to my channel. Comment in my co the comment section. You can say what you want to say. There's no rules here at the Pearls of Wisdom show. Okay? You can say what you want to say. The only rule is, it's not a rule either. If you're a person that gets offended at all, forget about easily. Like virtually at all. I mean, some things you're going to get offended by, right? But virtually at all. You might not want to go down there and slug it out in the comments section. Because I'm not going to be blocking people because they're not nice. So... However, I, I'll be nice. I'll always be nice to everybody there. But if somebody's not, we have to just deal with it, all right? They got, people are passionate about their teams. I want to take that away, right? Okay. Next, Columbus Blue Jackets. And am I just following the hype here, boy, boys and girls? Is that what I'm doing? I almost feel like I am. Like they're the trendy team because they got Goudreau. But last year, they were, you know, right around hovering the playoffs, a playoff spot as well. And they got better this year. Now, from Columbus standpoint, they're not going to be happy with me. And I've already had conversations with them. They said, we got Johnny Goudreau. I don't know why my voice just went that high. <laughs> we got Johnny Goudreau. And uh, Erica Branson, who... Let me just say it's just a tad overrated, uh, especially overpaid $4 million a year. And, you know, our young players are getting older. We're going to have a full season of Eric, uh, Patrick Laine. What in the world makes you think that we won't make the playoffs or we can't make the playoffs? I think you can. I think Columbus can make the playoffs. I'm putting them on the bubble of the playoffs. I think they can. There's a lot of things that have to happen, though. Um, they're going to have to outscore their opposition a lot because the defense is still not strong. Zach Wierenski is a great offensive defenseman. He's not fantastic defensively. He's better than Jones that was there before. You know, he's good. He's very good. Adam Boquist looks like he's going to be very good, but he's only 22 years old. So is he going to make a jump this year? I love Vladislav Gavrikov. He's a good defensive guy and can put up some offense. 
it slides after that. Andrew Peak gets the most out of his skill level, but he doesn't have much skill. And yes, he's a defensive defenseman, but analytically, he's not all that great at what he does. He does beat people up and stuff like that, which is kind of cool. But for my money, I don't really care as much if you can beat people up. 6'3", if you're big, I want to see strong possession numbers. I want to see uh, strong exit numbers. Few shots against while you're on the ice. You know. Oh, he blocks shots. Yeah, he blocks shots because he spends too much time in his own zone. And he doesn't angle guys away properly so they don't go back to the point. I, I don't know if you know this, but the goal is to not have to block shots. That's the goal. You don't want to have to block shots. And there's watch Colorado play. It's beautiful. And they're, they're, they don't block a lot of shots in Colorado. So they don't have to because they play in the other end of the ice a lot. And they angle people off. And they play down in the corners rather than allowing the puck to get to the points. So Andrew Peak could still become that. He's only 24 years old. He's come a long way. He's a hardworking guy, obviously. He, he's worked hard to become get to where he is right now because he wasn't very good. And he gets better and better every year. Maybe he even gets better this year and he pulls it off. Jake Bean, I mean, he's, he's good. He's a good power play guy. Um, but his overall game is pretty meh. And Good Branson is just overrated. He had his best year last year in Calgary with Sutter. And it was below average, really. So, but as a right defenseman in that spot, it's not bad. It's not bad. Gubranson's not bad. I just think he's overpaid at $4 million. I also think that Gubranson was brought in mostly to assure, ensure that Goudreau would also come. So Goudreau took 9-7. They said, okay, I'll tell you what. You come in for 9-7, and we'll bring your buddy Good Branson in. And I, they're probably – I'm going to guess here that they're really tight. Their wives know each other. He knows somebody now in the lineup. Um, kind of feels like home a little bit. All that stuff. Those are important to players. And you overpay him probably a million and a half, which is like paying Goudreau – 11 point something which isn't terrible for a guy who can put up over 100 points he's just he's he's a fantastic player so yeah i could be undervaluing this team goudreau and liney are going to be sick i love boone jenner didn't even mention him he's one of my favorite players in the league jack roslovich looked really good in the second half last year uh nyquist and voracek are what they are it's not a bad second line though of course you got sillinger there Cole Sillinger, what's he going to do at 20? Uh, the thing is, everybody knows who Cole is now. So he's not you not going to be hiding in the shadows and be able to pot goals. Sort of like what you saw last year as he tailed off in the second half. So it's a lot to ask Cole Sillinger to have a huge jump here at 20 years old. He's got the skill to do it, but I don't know. I love Igor Shinnikov. Everything could work out well here, like I said. And they could slip into a playoff spot, no doubt about it. But for right now, I don't have them there. I have them at number five in the division. Let me know what you think. Oh, didn't even mention the goaltender real quick. Oh, we got Kent Johnson. Ah, wake up. Kent Johnson. I don't think he's quite ready yet. But if he goes off, things could go really well here. Um, Nick Blankenberg, I like his game offensively. He could take that good Branson spot. Um the replacement players are not bad. Benstrom, Marshenko, defense, it does get bad. If there's injuries, things could get dicey on defense for Columbus, no doubt about it. Now, I say, well, you can say that about every team. No, no, actually you can. And if you listen to the rest of this, there are organizations that have strong replacement players. So Columbus is a little bit lacking in that area. Uh, as far as goaltending, I think Tarasov takes the number one. That's my take. I think Tarasov takes the number one spot this year. And I like him a lot. 
he could bring him to the promised land of the playoffs as well. Next, New Jersey Devils. And I have Columbus and New Jersey like a pretty much a coin flip, um, but for different reasons. I think, like I said about Columbus, they could get in if Tarasov really shows what that he can be consistently what he showed last year, which looks like a good future number one, could be right away number one goaltender, even better than Merzlikens. Going to New Jersey, we might as well just go into the biggest problem right off the bat, and that is the goaltending again. Now, I do think the goaltending is better than it was last year. This is the Rangers. This is the New Jersey. I think it's better than the goaltending last year. But I don't and I but I don't know if it's going to be good enough. Here's the thing. Now you're saying you put him in the playoffs. What do you mean the goaltending is not good enough? I'm going on a lean here, as we like to call it. I'm a professional handicapper, sports betting handicapper. I give people bets on hockey. They make money, they pay me. Okay. Vitek Vanacek, and we talked about Washington earlier. Washington has not really been known for bringing their goaltenders up well. Um, it seems they've had a difficult time with it. They get Holpe turned out pretty good. But for the most part, they have gone out and got goaltenders because their goaltenders that they brought up have not worked. However, they have a tendency to go elsewhere and work okay. Vitek Vanacek, bring in Vitek Vanacek. Vitek Vanacek checks all the boss boxes for a goaltender that could be a really good goaltender. He's quick. He's positionally sound. He's got a great glove hand. He, uh, you know, he he he's all good. He's got all the tools. Physically, he looks like he should be a fantastic goaltender. Um, last year. In Washington, he was okay, though. That's the thing. But the thing it was, the thing was, is that it was in Washington. So, I imagine New Jersey is coming in and saying, you know what, we can get this guy. We, we, he's got all the tools. We have confidence in our goaltending program here. Uh, Mackenzie Blackwood it would, if he wouldn't get injured. And that's the other thing. If, God, please, if, if you're a New Jersey fan, you're saying, have a healthy season, they're golden. Because Blackwood is absolutely fantastic. And now you've got an amazing 1B in Vitek Vanacek where they can both fight for the number one. I ha I just got it. I have a feeling that Mackenzie Blackwood, the injuries are over. I just have a feeling. It's just in my gut. And uh, if that's the case, we'll look at the rest of the lineup now. First of all, Nico Heischer is injured again week to week. I, I don't know. Talk about it with injuries. My gosh, this guy with injuries. So we'll leave him out for now. Andre Pla was an amazing pickup by the New Jersey Devils. Um, they have... Jack Hughes, probably a 100-point player at 22 years old. Superstar. Alexander Holtz, I don't know yet. Did fantastic in the AHL last year. Looks like he's going to make the lineup. Incredible shot. If he can even be a 50-pointer with Hughes, his shot is insane. Jack Hughes is an amazing passer. And you got Pallott driving to the net. That's what Pallott does. It's a great line. It's a great line if it works out. Sharon Govich, now, the problem here is you have Eric Halla. I personally think that it's a nice experiment, and Eric Halla gives you this impression that he can be a second-line center, but everywhere he goes, he doesn't hold it. Everywhere he goes, he doesn't hold it. He's not a super skater. He's a grinding-type guy who is about average to below average defensively. But he's all over the ice, an energy guy. They can actually put up some points, uh, as you can tell, with 44 points in 78 games. 
tr- more of a third line guy than a than than a, a second line scorer. But he does a lot of things to create room up there, and you can utilize him there. It's just not a long term fix. Personally, I'm going with Dawson Mercer. Cross my fingers at 21 years old. He can hold down that spot. Maybe they can go back and forth, back and forth, give him a break off that spot every once in a while just as he builds himself up. But regardless, Brat and Sharon Govich and Hall on the second line is not too shabby at all. And if you put Mercer there and bring Hall down into the second line spot, Boquist over there with Tatar, now you got a fantastic top nine. So, and then. A beautiful fourth line in Miles Wood, McLeod, and Bastion. Beautiful fourth line. So top 12 is absolutely fantastic. But my real reason for having them in the playoffs this year is the defense. Ryan Graves and Damon Severson are so underrated. It's sick. And Siegenthaler is the most underrated defenseman in the league. Bar none, as far as I'm concerned. He, he is amazing. Elite defensive defenseman. With Dougie Hamilton, that top four is as good as Carolina's. That top four is as good as Carolina's top four. They've been there. They were, you know, they're sort of, they have been young. As far as Siegenthaler is concerned, meshing together. This is a year I believe they take off. And this is a year that the forwards in New Jersey lean off of Palat, who is one of the best two-way players in the game, and he's a veteran, to help out Lindy Ruff get them to play better two-way game. They, they need to get better two-way. That, it's, it's, it's definitely a problem. And I would say if there's not an improvement in that in the first 20 games, Lindy Ruff is gone. I really do. Because that's what's going to hold them back. Uh, more than the goaltending, as far as I'm concerned. And then, of course, when Nico Heischer is back in the lineup, it just becomes a spectacular lineup, as far as I'm concerned. A lot of players hitting their prime. It's just set up for a big, big job. Uh, Jesper Bratt getting the one-year contract. He's on a contract year. You can just see amazing things from him. Their replacement players are really good, too. So if injuries do come up, I like Kevin Ball. I like what he's given. He can go in there and, and and play, you know, 20 games this year, maybe more. Um, Andreas jo- Johnson, that they have him as a as a as an extra right now. He can fill in anywhere in the lineup. He's solid. Uh, so I don't know if Nemich is going to make it, but Nolan Foot, he's been waiting for a spot for a long time. Um, Maka Madulin, he isn't there yet, right? Riley Walsh should be ready here soon. Akadiak, I think that's how you say it. Please help me if I said it wrong. Uh, everybody I hear in New, everything I hear in New Jersey say that he's fantastic as well. And then you still got Nico Dawes, who held the fort pretty darn good last year if he has to come in because Blackwood's injured again. So... I like the overall depth. I like this team. I think they make the playoffs this year. I got them in a playoff spot. Tell me what you think of that, New Jersey Devils fans. And that's a big, big boost because they were way out of it last year, right? So it's a hot take. It's a difficult take, but I could see it happening. Next, Pittsburgh Penguins, third in the division. And you can go down this roster all you want, pick it apart however you way you want. Um, the fact of the matter is the Pittsburgh Penguins have a system and culture there that just win. I don't think there's, I don't know, maybe Boston might be in that category. Uh, there's probably other teams that are, that they just win. Sullivan is an amazing coach. Got to get coach of the year one of these years. Incredible. And I think the only reason why he hasn't got one is because Sidney Crosby was there and he's probably one of the greatest leaders of all time. So, you know, he gets more he gets the credit that that some that Sullivan should be getting as well. But apparently Rickard Raquel has come in with a, in a in in a, in shape this year that he's never been in before. 
And he has followed this compete level that is set by Crosby and the gang here in Pittsburgh. Their competition is constant there against each other all the time. The whole system is based on competing with each other to become better and doing things for the benefit of their team in every way, which Crosby does maybe as much or more than any superstar ever, right? Um, Zucker, Melk, and Rust. I'm not a big Zucker guy. Hopefully he doesn't get injured again. You know, maybe he has a good year. I'm not really big on him, but Melk and Rust is a great combination. Um, Kasperi Kapanen must have hit the gym hard this year. He must have did something to finally, I don't, like, is he a gamer? It, there's something about this guy that just shows a commitment level that isn't sub there, but his skill level is so high, he keeps on getting chances over and over and over again. If his commitment level reaches his, com his skill level, this guy is going to be freaking amazing. It just hasn't happened yet. Does it happen this year? If it does, I'd probably have Pittsburgh too low here, honestly. Um, you have the injury of Teddy Bluger. That's the reason why Josh Archibald is in here. I'm not a big fan of him. Had him in Edmonton. The guy's just a, a missile guy. He, he, he's, he, he's 5'10", 176, but he'll, he'll smash into anybody. He's like a scud missile. So if somebody does something to one of the big guys up on the, like Rick Crosby or Gunsel or something like that, didn't even mention Gunsel. Do you have to? The guy's a beast. One of the most underrated players in the league. Bar none, no doubt about it. But that's all he really does. He's terrible defensively. Offensively, he's nothing. Like, get Bluger back quick because uh, he would be much better in that lineup. Paling is whatever. Brock McGinn is okay. But it's a good fourth line. Overall, top 12, pretty fantastic. Defense, I don't get how they do so well. Um, put the life back into Petrie again. And that makes up a lot. That's fantastic. Uh, Marcus Peterson, I know guys don't like him in Pittsburgh. Analytically, he's strong, man. Um, yeah, he's not a bruiser. I think it's because he's really big and he's not a bruiser, and people hate to see that. They hate to see that. But positionally, he's pretty good. Coughs up the puck every once in a while because he's a, he's a bit of a risk taker. But overall, his analytics are fine. Better than Demelin's, actually. Uh, and But Demelin looks better at the eye test because he fights people off the puck seemingly a little more, but unfortunately he puts himself out of a position a lot of times to do it. He's a good first passer out of the zone, and he works well with Latang that way. Uh, good to see Joseph getting a chance. Jan Ruda is kind of overrated. I say this every year. Their defense doesn't look good, but they end up playing fantastic somehow. Or as a team, just the overall team just plays well. They compensate for it all the time. And getting Tristan Jari back will be, you know, just please don't get injury, Tristan. I want to see, we all want to see how you do in a full year, full playoffs, full everything, especially after that terrible year you had two, two years ago in the bubble or whatever where you just couldn't stop a puck. I'd love to see you just jump back in again and do really well. But anyways, I'm taking them third, mostly because Pittsburgh always also takes it easy a bit through the season. They know you have to pace themselves. They're a veteran team. They know you have to pace yourself through the season. So, um, And I think they will do that. And the next team I'm about to talk about, oh, the replacement players, they're always a problem, but they always find guys like, Poulin will all of a sudden be ready, or Gruden will do well. Like, what do they get Zahorna and they let him go because they probably, you know, Drake Kajula will have the game season of his career or something. Uh, Ty Smith will come up on defense. Like, uh, he's tw only 22 years old. He had, he had a pretty strong camp from what I understand. But they'll find somebody. They just always do. They just always do, Pittsburgh. Next team, New York Rangers. I have them second. And uh, before you get all like, yay, it's they got a team that will win. They got a team. They're building a team that's going to win in the regular season. But 
falter in the playoffs. So far, I mean, they did get to, we got to the semifinals last year. Yeah, well, if Pittsburgh doesn't go, Jari doesn't go down in Pittsburgh, you don't win that series. Simple as that, right? Um, and uh, the pro they, you got through on your power play. In the playoffs, that just doesn't work, man. Five on five is what you need in the playoffs. In the regular season, though, you can thrive on a killer, killer power play, which they have. Zabonijad, uh, Kreider, uh, Panarin, of course. But these guys are not good five-on-five five guys. I know Kreider scored a lot of goals last year. And he was probably one of the better five-on-five five guys. But Mika Zabonijad was not very good five-on-five. Five. Panarin, as many points as he had, it was mostly on the power play. Especially defensively, these guys, the, this team is not solid. Now, Capo Caco is going to be a very good two-way forward. Very, very good. And if he go if he goes off this year, then that's going to help a lot. Alexis Lafreniere also, I believe, is going to be a beast two-way player. Could go off this year. If that's the case, you could see some playoff success in New York, I think. Because of course you got you have Shesterkin. But really, honestly, New York Rangers fans, you know as well as I do, Shesterkin, especially in the first half of the season, if you had a lesser goaltender, an average goaltender last year, you're not making the playoffs. The Rangers are not making the playoffs if they don't have Shesterkin. And I think Colorado might have made a shrewd move in getting Gorgiev there because most goaltenders would look like Gorgiev. With the off with the forward defense play that they sh showed last year. Now it's a weird team because on defense, Lindgren's a beast. Fox is a beast. Miller is turning into a beast. Almost is. Truba's overrated. Not really good defensively. He likes to beat people up and hit people. Goes out of position to do it a lot, um, and can put up some points. He's better offensively than he is defensively. I personally don't think he's worth eight million dollars a year. He gave him the captaincy. I guess he's a good rah rah guy, good in the room. You know, makes people feel good, all that kind of stuff like that, which is good, I guess. But Braden Schneider is going to take his spot. I can assure you that. I would hope so. Maybe not now, because I think Chris Drury doesn't get it this way. He brings in guys like Ryan Reeves. Guy can't play. I don't care how much of a cheerleader you're in your room and how excited you get everybody. All of those sort of things like that. For me personally, those are wonderful things if you can play. Ryan Reeves can't play. He did. They went out and got Ryan Carpenter. Pretty much the same. Blay, can't believe they gave up Dushnevich and that's all they got was Blay in a second or whatever they got. Unbelievable. I mean, these guys will beat you up in the corners. They'll do physical things. They'll make everybody go ooh and ah when they hit. And I have nothing wrong with hitting. I love a lot of guys that hit. But I like guys that hit and don't put themselves out of position. They don't get that here in New York. Drury doesn't seem to get that. Uh, old school thinking. Barkley Goudreau, yeah, he's okay. He's a fourth line guy. He's kind of overpaid at 3.6. Filipino is amazing. They're getting to be amazing anyways. Had a great year last year. Uh, Vincent, Vincent Trocek was an overpay, I believe, unless he somehow goes back to what he was three years ago, and I don't see it happening. I don't think he's all that much better than Strom. Five on five, not very good. It just doesn't seem like there's a value five on five with Drury. He obviously doesn't have an analytics department, and his eye test doesn't see it. I personally see it all day. And it's a weird team because you're going to have guys, young guys, that are great five on five. And old guys that aren't. And I just don't think this team will ever get over the top because of it. I, I just don't think so. However, I do think they'll get second. Because this is a team that's not going to do what Pittsburgh does. And just kind of coast through some games. Some games you just got to, you know what, we've reached our peak of fatigue. We'll go play a perimeter game. Hopefully we get two points here. We move on and we get some rest. Got to rest. up. We can't kill ourselves for the playoffs. Rangers don't know what that is. They just go in like sort of every game until they're until they're gassed, 
Now you say, well, how come they're not good five on five? Because they're terrible positionally. They run around too much in, the, in, in both zones, burning themselves out. That's what I think, New York Rangers fans. I'm going to get absolutely slammed by Rangers fans here. <laughs> They're going to, I can just hear it now. You talk like you don't have, you just don't like the Rangers. You just don't like us. Just admit it. Blah, 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 blah. I don't not like any team as far as an organization is concerned because they're in a city. Not one. There's not one team out there that because they're in a city, I don't like them. I just see what I see. I'm an Edmonton Oilers fan. If you've been listening to my videos, you should have heard me slam the Oilers the last three years. This year, I kind of like what they did. But I just call it as I see it. Now, that doesn't mean I'm right either. So tell me how wrong I am down in the chat. I don't mind. When I say I'm going to get slammed in the chat, I don't mind that. That's great. Tell me all about it, my friends. I'll talk back to you too. Finally, the Carolina Hurricanes, now the polar opposite of the team that I just talked about, the New York Rangers. By the way, New York Rangers have a lot of amazing talent there. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't be putting them second in the division if they didn't have amazing talent, especially in Shesterkin. I just think that Drury's kind of screwing it up there. Carolina, not so much. Svechnikov, amazing two-way two forward. Who knows what he's going to get for goals this year. He's going to hit 40 or 50 eventually. Could be this year. Aho just getting better and better every year. One of the best two-way centers in the league. Jarvis, the sky's the limit for this kid. The guy's got talent, bravery, two-way presence, everything. Tara Bynan, all the way down the list here, boys and girls. Kasperi Kakaniemi was actually very good defensively last year. And I believe he's going to have a great year after almost getting improperly developed in Montreal. Carolina's turning around. Like, this organization is insane. Paul Stastny was a fantastic move. This guy's an incredible two-way winger who's in amazing shape for 36 years old. He's going to help Jordan Stahl a lot because Jordan Stahl probably should be a fourth liner now. But And Jesper Fast. Um who is also a great two-way player. Andre Kasha, why not? Great move. Chris Jack Drury, had, when he was up last year, he looked fantastic. Martinuk, Martinuk is like the fourth-line guy. It should be Martinuk, Stahl, and Kasha, I think. And Drury, I think, should go up. But I, I understand he's still young, and maybe they don't want to be handing him that kind of minutes yet as his body kind of gets big enough for 82 games strong enough for an 82-game schedule. So I'll give him that. Slavin, Burns was an amazing move. I don't know. This guy never stops. 37 years old. I, he just doesn't. I think he could just have an absolutely insane season with this team. Insane. Playing with Slavin, a guy who it's, it's criminal. He doesn't have a Norris by now, as far as I'm concerned. The guy's an amazing defenseman. Shea, good offensive guy. Not very good defensively, but he plays with Brett Pesci, who is an elite defensive defenseman. Kelvin DeHaan for seven hundred eighty hundred fifty thousand. Are you freaking kidding me? This guy is a top four defenseman. He's going to be playing in your five six spot. Not an elite defensive defenseman, but a very good one for eight hundred fifty thousand. Steal. Um, Ethan Bear had a rough year last year. I don't know. It's sort of attitude stuff. He's got the physical, but seems like he gets mentally uh, focused on things that don't matter in the rink a little much, and it affects him on the rink. They do matter, but you really got to take care of yourself and what you're doing on the in the rink, right? Um, however, they're going to give him a good shot, and their replacement players when Dylan Coglin comes back. What a great move! Getting him in that Pacioretty deal is awesome. Derek Stepan, he can do it, fourth line. He's been a elite defensive center for years. He's not really elite anymore at his age, but he's still very good. And uh, Neeson, you know what I notice what I'm saying here about all almost all these forwards, like you would with Colorado? They're elite or very good defensively. That is a team that's going to win cups. 
I'm not saying this team is going to win the Cup this year because I'm still concerned about the injury issues with Anderson and Ranta. But I put them very highly up there as a team that could win the Cup. And I don't think they're going to win the President's Trophy, but I do think they're going to win this division, even if they kind of take it easy every once in a while so they're playoff ready, which they were kind of burnt out last year, this young team. So... There's a lot to learn for young teams. You got to learn how to pace yourself. You got to get strong enough for an 82 game season, all that kind of stuff like that. However, they got so many guys hitting their, you know, tw- Svechnikov is 22, 24 is right, 23, 24 is right where in the wheelhouse of where guys like hit their, we're here now. They jump, they pop. But guys like Svechnikov could pop at 22, superstar guys. Um, this is a fantastic lineup. I love it. I love their replacement players. Dezingo was a nice pickup for the fourth line. Lane Peterson has NHL experience. Um, problem probably being defense. Defense. I mean, you got Coach 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 Tikoff. Uh, he can play goal. He played well last year when it, when given a chance. But I don't know who's going to really play. William Lagason's okay. They could use some depth on D. That was about the only thing I could say not good about Carolina Hurricanes. All right, tell me what you think, Carolina Hurricanes fans there in the comment section. There are all the fans in the land out there. What do you think about my takes on all your teams? I'm going to get into the rest of the divisions right away. Look at them falling over here. Have a great day, everybody. Man, I spent an hour on this. Okay, bye.